Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our fourth workshop of the Cape Town Food Growers Initiative, The Living Soil. Uh, today, we're covering the good, the bad, and the ugly of plant diseases and bugs. Um, today's presentation is based on the pictures and the questions posted by the Cape Town growers over the last four months. Um, food Growers Initiative is a collective of anybody who wants to grow food with a vision to create a food forest out of Cape Town to enable food freedom. It originated during the pandemic to connect the entire Cape Town and surrounds. The Food Growers Initiative is hosting this event, which was curated and facilitated by myself, Erica Inches. It is presented by Tamron Jensen of NEM Labs, and it's using Andrea Kovitz's Zoom account and in collaboration with PHA campaign uh, led by Nazia Sonde. Our presenter, Tamron of NEM Labs, uh, will, is going to present um, uh, a presentation covering all the examples that we're given in. Uh, and once these examples are addressed, we will have time to raise more examples and discuss. So please use the chat function while the presentation is on to raise your questions, and you'll be given a chance to address them uh, to the workshop participants at the end of the presentation. We hope this will expand and encourage a conversation that leads to action to regenerate the soil with organic waste and expand the urban options and applications to unlock further innovation and entrepreneurship through collective action. Tamron, who's about to take over, studied at Stellenbosch University and did a BSc degree in plant pathology and viticulture. She afterwards did a master's in plant pathology. Her first job was an inspector at the Department of Agriculture for two years, and then a technical consultant at the disease, plant disease clinic uh, on Stellenbosch campus. She's currently seven months working at NEM Labs as a technical consultant and plant pathologist. And her main area of expertise is fungi and bacteria, plant diseases, but also learning a lot about insects and nematodes. So without further ado, uh, I welcome you, Tammy, and please go ahead. Thank you, Erica. Just want to share my screen quickly. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our second presentation in this series, Good or Bad Bugs and Other Queries. Please note that any speculation and or identification of possible symptoms are based on representative photos, photos submitted. These diagnoses were not verified in a presentation. As per our previous meeting, let's briefly sort out the lingo. Pathogens are disease-causing microorganisms, for example, fungi, bacteria, viruses, and nematodes. Abiotic is non-living factors such as water, sunlight, temperature, chemicals, wind, etc. Biotic factors are all living organisms in an ecosystem like animals, birds, bacteria, humans, etc. A symptom is the expression of the disease. Like for instance, you see yellowing, wilting, rotting, etc. A sign is the presence of a pathogen, like for example, oozing, fungal growth, eggs or frass. A beneficial bug or predatory bug are any of a number of species of insects that perform valued services like pollination and pest control. What is a pest? Animals that are considered pests or vermin when they injure people or damage crops, forestry or buildings. It is also important to keep in mind that not all symptoms and signs are caused by disease or pest. Symptoms may be due to abiotic injury, like we mentioned before, such as sunburn, nutrient deficiency, or other non-living causes. 
This is very important to rule out. This plays a vital role in future management and to sustain good agricultural practices. Firstly, I would like to thank you all for the lovely photos you shared. The following examples were received by you, the CTT Food Growers Society. So if the presentation might be all over the place, please note that these samples were not characterized, but discussed in this presentation as they were received from November 2021 up until today. It is important to feel free to comment or ask any questions at the end of the presentation. We would love to hear your input and feedback, so keep your notepad and pen ready. The following descriptions are based on published literature, and this refers to the perfect symptom. However, please remember that environments, climate, and cultural practices differ, and symptoms may look different. Characteristic symptoms to look out for due to insect attacks. Insect symptoms may be confused with plant diseases. Insect symptoms include, but are not limited to, chewed, mined, or tattered foliage and blossoms. This may be due to the presence of larvae or moths, like miners, slugs, and snails. There's a nice picture of um, mining. Flecked, yellowing, bleached, or bronze foliage are caused by spider mites, thrips, aphids, and other insects. I'll show you an example of the spider mites a bit later on. Distorted leaves, flowers, and other plant parts are due to the presence of aphids, thrips, wasps, psyllids, and mites. This is a nice example of um, psyllid damage on citrus. Um, it usually has those bumpy, wart-like appearance. Other characteristic symptoms to look out for is dieback. This may be due to the presence of scale insects, boring insects, and others. Um, usually, insect leaves traces or products behind. Aphids and scale insects produce honeydew, which is a sugary substance on which a black fungus known as sooty mold can grow and expand. It also attracts ants, and I know lots of you are familiar with this. Snails and slugs produce slime. Mealybugs produce wax. Let's have a look at our first received entry. The producer noticed injury at the stem and soil line area of his potato plant. Most likely, this symptom was caused by a cutworm but it was difficult to confirm due to no physical evidence of the pest presence. Our advice would be, would be to keep a lookout for caterpillars and moths and suggest putting out traps. Thank you very much for this interesting photo we received all the way from Philippi. The farmer found these strains supposedly fungi growing at the bottom of spinach and brassica seedlings in a seedling tray. He speculated that it might hinder seedling growth and cause yellowing. Usually, algae would grow at the top of um, a plug where it is wetter. This is probably a mushroom-like fungus growing at the bottom and would not hinder the growth of the seedlings. However, it is advised to disinfect seedling trays before new seedlings are planted and not reuse them um, continuously without cleaning. Use a solution of spore kill and jig and try not to overwater seedlings and promote good ventilation as far as possible. These lovely photos were received from Athlone and the crop is maize. It was identified as a shield bug nymph, and this little critter has a very wide host, host range, so keep a lookout for this bug. 
It is a sucking insect and very harmful. Managing practices would include pick off by hand and discard if there's a low infestation, infestation. If a high infestation is present, chemical treatment is advised. Good or a bad bug? Should this worm be added to a compost heap? Well, we think yes, if in a compost heap, it is fine. However, if contained in pots and garden, it might it may feed on flowers and turf fruits. We speculate that this might be a June bug. Good or a bad bug? Thank you very much for this lovely video you sent to us. As you can see, they are quite busy little critters, but they are actually beneficial. They're also known as shredders, aka springtails and help to decompose organic material. They are no threat to crops. From the other photos that you submitted to us, it appears that the farmer, the farmer has, however, a waterlogging problem and should be attended to. This little critter comes from my garden. It was identified as a spotted fruit shaver and I'm, I think you're all familiar with this. Um, we would usually treat it with a contact insecticide, liquid or granular. Um, it is also best to work it into the top layer of your soil around the plants as these beetles burrow in the ground during the day and come out at night. Various other products available at other at local agricultural product distributors. This producer had severe, almost flaky We can't hear anything, so I don't know if you can resume again from that slide. Sorry, you can't hear anything. That's right. Spider mites and psyllids are main pests on curry leaves. Aphids are usually associated with young plants. Groupings of yellow, brown, pink, black or grey insect, usually wingless, are found on the leaves. They are sucking insects and associated with yellow lesions, curling and yellowing. Sometimes they may leave sticky substance behind like honeydew I mentioned before that attracts ants and sooty mold. Spider mites are very hard to see, but we will see webbing behind the leaves. They are also associated with piercing leaves, like a sucking bug, causing yellowing and necrotic spots. They usually also prefer more hot, humid weather. Psyllids, like mites and aphids, also suck the sap out of the plants. Leaves will eventually turn yellow and die. Scale insects with, sh with a shell like covering also attached to the plant and rain sap. Plants appear to be stunted, yellow, have misshapen leaves. Scales 
also excrete a sticky waste called honeydew that attracts black sooty mold. The general management practices with these um, pests would be to include blasting leaves with a water and apply weekly applications of oil or neem and soapy products. Please keep this summary in, in mind when you have, have a look at your other crops. Usually the symptoms and um, may be similar with each other. This farmer has an issue on his squash. He currently has used four different traps, but not much success. We identified as um, this culprit as the pumpkin fly. Um, I've spoken to Lene, one of my colleagues, and the best management would be to use funnel traps with a protein-based lure. So it would be advised to go to your local agricultural um, branch for more information. This producer um, had problems with his or her um, rape where they had um, symptoms of yellowing. Um, the new plants also showed signs of yellowing. Now I would suggest to please revisit our very first presentation. These um, signs that I can see here are most likely nutrient deficiency. It could also be fusarium. So please, producer, check for root and crown rot. If plants do not revive after fertilizer application, it is most likely soil borne disease or nematodes. This fellow farmer from KZN, um, tomato plants, showed sudden disease development, probably um, after large amounts of rain. It's best to evaluate leaf symptoms too. Do you see any lesions or spots? Also have a look at your neighboring plants. Do they show similar symptoms like cankers? Um, it is most likely then bacterial canker. Usually, bacteria may cause total disintegration of vascular tissues. So you can cut through the stem and see what's going on inside. You're welcome to send some more pictures. Um, spots and other can cankers will, all, will also develop. Usually copper products are recommended and it is important to maintain good sanitation practices. Do not use this plant material for further composting. This lovely photo was received from, from Mitchell's plane and the, uh, the producer asked what white stuff is present on the aloe. Um, one of my colleagues identified the insect as armored scale insects. It's easily to wipe off using a soap solution. Now, these examples were received without any photos, so sorry for that. Um, it's a mowbray example, an old tree in mainly ornamental garden having problems with fruit fly on plum trees. Our recommendation would be to hang traps and or use registered chem chemicals. Another fellow farmer needs some advice on his Irish potatoes. The leaves are dying back. Is it better to not water as much and leave it in the ground to harvest when needed? or to harvest and keep in a cool dark store, um, storeroom. For future man management, it is best to remove, if the tubers are big enough, to harvest and remove as soon as possible. The tubers will only rot in the soil and cause further inoculum um, sources. It's difficult to determine if it's a soil borne disease and we would prefer if you could send us some pictures, please. The following um, pictures were found in our colleague's home garden and can be used as future references for you. This is a bad bug. Insect sucking insect damage uh, by a leaf hopper or a psyllid on chili plants. This is 
symptoms called, uh, caused by a red spider mite. As you can see, the yellow flicking going on and the bronzing of the leaves. This is a cottony cushion scale. This little critter can infect a number of woody ornamentals and certain crops. So yes, this is also a bad bug. A tedious method for management would be to rub the insects with a cotton swab dipped in alcohol. Hot water can also be used to kill mealybugs or this cottony cushion scale insect. This is another example of a scale insect on citrus. As you can see, honeydew is also um, produced, attracting the insects, uh, the ants. This producer from Westlake shared this great piece of info on preparing a soil mix. As you can see, how well the tomatoes developed after approximately two months. So please have a look and try it out for yourself. Another fellow producer also submitted some extra info. Um, please visit the website and have a look at the additional information. I think they use a milk, a milk based product to use against um, powdery mildew on cucumbers. Right. I will now hand over to my colleague Lene van der Walt, who will tell you more about beneficial insects and products. So guys, I mainly um, covered all the bad bugs, is, um, excluding the springtail, the one that the video I showed you. So she will be focusing on the good bugs. Lene has definitely got a knack for insects, she has green fingers and loves being in the outdoors. She also did a master's in plant pathology, but her love for nematodes and insects have changed all that. Thank you, Lene. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, thanks. Um, the previous time that Tammy did the presentation, uh, you guys asked for more information on beneficial insects to control other insects that you can use in your garden. So I'm going to show you only some of the ones that are available commercially. And the good news is that there are two companies that only um, within the last two months um, brought out home garden, or um, they also call it the, um, the cannabis um, ranges, and they are these are available at at um, local garden centres. Um, I'm going to show you that a little bit later in the presentation. So just to tell you a bit about uh, more about the uh, beneficial mites that you can use to control some of your insect pests. There are mainly five species of predatory mites that are available for release in your gardens. Um, yeah, the, the names, um, they call it the Californicus mites, the Swirsky mites, Persimilis mites, and the Monterensis and QQ mirrors. Uh, most of these mites feed on other spider mites, as well as white fly and thrips. Um, they are very small, so sometimes you can't see them with the naked eye, but the photo on the right shows you that um, the Californicus mite feeding on the two-spotted spider mite. Um, oh, excuse the next one. Um, there are also some predatory beetles available um, to release in your gardens. These are mainly Cryptolemus and Chylochorus. Uh, they are quite small ladybugs. They feed mainly on mealybugs, aphids, scales and psyllids and other soft-bodied insects. Um, and it's the adults as well as the larvae that feed on, uh, on the mealybugs and scales. Um, you can see 
The left hand picture shows the adult cryptolemus, the little buggy, and then at the bottom, it shows the larva. Now that larva looks a lot like mealybugs, but it's the larva of the cryptolemus. And they also feed very voraciously on, on mealybug, um, on the small mealybugs that come out of the um, eggs. So they are very, very beneficial. And um, yeah, they are available to purchase. Okay, so uh, there are also many predatory uh, wasps available, um, but these are very more specific, much more spe specific um, host ranges. So two of these, the Anagyrus and the Leptomastix, um, parasitize mealybugs. They lay the eggs inside the mealybugs and the larvae eats the insides of the mealybugs. The aphytis in the middle, parasitizes scale insects, and they also lay the eggs inside the scales, and then their larvae eat the scale from the inside. Um, just to show you what the products look like, um, these are small vials with mites inside, so you hang them in your garden or in your greenhouse, and the mites climb out of the um, of the little tubes and they look, go look for their prey. Now the field bugs um, range, I don't know if they are available in garden centers yet, but the, the guy that I supplied the number of, Ram Jonker, he is their um, technical guy in the field. Um, so you are welcome to, to contact him uh, directly. Um, the other company that also has a garden range is Insect Science. Now their products are available online as well as at Superplants in Tukai, at Ferndale Nursery in Constantia and at Cape Garden Centre in Houston Vlakte. But you can also contact their Cape Town office if you have any, um, any queries about their products. They also sell sticky traps, uh, blue and yellow traps and um, sticky rolls that you have, um, put up in your greenhouse to catch the insects and for monitoring. Um, there are many other predatory insects that I'm not going to mention at the moment. Um, hi. Um, but these are mainly um, things like um, uh, lace wings and other ladybugs. Um, and you also get some fungi and bacteria that, that can kill insects. Um, the fungi that can kill insects is metarhizium. Um, I'm not sure if it's available to purchase for home gardeners. And also, Bacillus thuringiensis um, uh, it kills moth larvae that, that feeds on the plants. But I'm also not sure if it's available to purchase for home gardeners. So, um, yeah, that's about it from my side. Um, any questions, you are welcome to ask. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lene and Tammy. Uh, for preparing this. Um, there are a few questions that have come through on the chat. Um, if anybody else has still got questions, please uh, put up your hand. Um, I think we'll just deal with the questions that have come through on the chat so far. Um, Miriam Edwards, would you like to ask your question? Yes, please. Um, so my question is, how does one get rid of, you know, the organics that has illnesses and disease on them? Because we, um, I'm scared to put that into the compost. So how do we deal with those? Um, and how do we get rid of that? How do, basically, how, how do I dispose of them? You can either dispose of them with your municipal waste or you can burn them. 
um, burning them is actually the best way to get rid of all the pests and disease inoculum. Thank you so much. And then the next, next questions come from the, Naomi. Naomi, would you like to ask your question? Yeah, thank you, Erika. Sorry, I was just trying to unmute there. Uh, it's, it, I think it is a red spider mite. It, it's quite tiny and it weaves a really tight web. And I noticed this particularly on the uh, marigolds. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, unless it's, it's not the correct insect. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't send the picture, but I was very intrigued by the, the damage that it could cause and the really tight web that it wove. So, yes, that, that sounds a lot like red spider mites. <laughs> okay. And they do cause a lot of damage and they spread um, to many other plants very quickly. Um, the best way to get rid of them is to remove the plants and just get rid of it. Um, or you can, if, it, if the infestation is not so high yet, you, you can use some of these beneficial mites. Um, they will actually eat the spider mites. But um, if you've got a high infestation, the best is to remove them because they usually... Um, I haven't heard of them um, infesting marigolds yet, but they are very damaging to tomato plants, cucumbers, citrus. They've got a very wide host range. Um, the other way is to apply chemical, um, chemical control, a systemic uh, chemical that gets taken up by the plant. And as they feed on the plant, they die, but they are not easy to get rid of. And also not wise to put in a compost heap? Should no, no, I wouldn't, no. They spread all over the place. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question comes from myself, uh, asking how do you deal with leaf miners? Yeah, leaf miner is also, or a, a nice place to have. Um, if you see the first infested leaf, remove it. Try to remove as many infested leaves as possible. But if the infestation is too high, you will need to apply a chemical um, because yeah, they they mine into your tomatoes and everything. So it's a it's actually a moth. A moth larva and the moths are quite tiny as well so you don't always see them before they <laughs> before they start causing damage um, you can also put up sticky traps that will help to monitor for these um, and then you can um, apply um, preventative measures um, in terms of chemicals or um, traps specifically for these type of moths, you get lures for them and, um, that attracts them to the sticky traps. Is there a particular beneficial insect that can you can use to fight them? Not that I'm aware of. Um, some wasps do um, parasitize, but not the ones that are commercially available. So you might get one of one or two that parasitize the, the larva and some that parasitize the eggs, but um, there's nothing commercially available for, for leaf miner. The one okay. and the and the sticky traps. Uh, it's not something you can really use to prevent because of any insect that flies into them gets caught. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. But they attract, it, it depends on the type of insects, whether you need to um, put up blue blue traps or yellow traps. Um, I can't remember which ones are for which insects at the moment, but they also attract traps and um, mealybugs, flying, this flying stage of mealybugs, um, 
yeah, so they can catch all kinds of of um, other insects, pest insects as well. But if you put up a lure for the moths, they only attract the moths. Um, so that's more specific. Okay. So something like a, a neem oil that you put on the plants wouldn't really help for leaf miners? Uh, no, I don't think that would be very... Um, I don't think that would be... Um, that would help. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, Miriam, I see that you've got another question. Yeah, so can earthworm tea be used um, undiluted against some of these um, bugs as opposed to store-bought chemicals then? Um, Miriam, um, I would not advise that um, sometimes if you use the earthworm tea undiluted, it can cause chemical burns to the plant. Um, and also if you... Uh, not not always, but sometimes if you do um, apply to the leaves, it actually attracts uh, bacterial diseases and some fungal diseases. So you could end up with a problem instead of helping. Of helping you know. Um, you know, it is beneficial to add it to the soil um, and oh. dilute it um, as a fertilizer. Okay. Thanks okay. a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Has anybody else got any questions? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, well, thank you very much, Tammy and Lene. We really appreciate the time uh, and all the messages that came through over the last four months with all the different pictures. Thank you for gathering all that information and, and giving us um, some really good uh, solutions for all of this. Um, I will see what happens for a, a next uh, workshop. Um, but for now, I guess we will say goodbye. So everybody, welcome to unmute and say goodbye. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much for your time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Erica. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, everyone, for the knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was really informative. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And it's recorded, yeah, uh, uh, Sissi?